very hard other than if you want to find the secant of something, well, find the cosine first and then just flip it. If you want to find the cosecant of something, just find the sine first and then flip it. And if you want to find the cotangent of an angle, find the tangent first and just flip it. So another way of presenting this that I want you to write down is we know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, right? So then the cosecant, which is abbreviated CSC, is just going to be the flip of that, hypotenuse over opposite. Cosine was adjacent over hypotenuse, A over H. So its reciprocal function is secant. So if you're ever looking for the secant, you're just going to flip that H over A. And lastly, we always knew that tangent was opposite over adjacent. So if we want the cotangent, which is abbreviated COT, we would just do adjacent over opposite. Okay? Now, the biggest challenge is going to be memorizing which one is the reciprocal of what. So, does anyone see a way that they're going to remember which of these goes with which ones of these? Which one's the easiest to remember, I would say? The tangent. Tangent goes with cotangent, no question. Those are reciprocals of each other. How do you think you could keep these straight? To know that cosecant goes with sine and secant goes with cosine. It's kind of annoying, isn't it? Because the, I mean, the way I remember it is that it's annoying. Because this one starts with an S. Yet it's not the reciprocal of this one that starts with an S. And this one starts with a C. Yet it's not a reciprocal of the one that starts with a C. You follow? That's how I remember it. I know that the reciprocal of sine is not secant because they both start with an S. And then that would be too easy, wouldn't it? And they would never help us out, would they? Does that make sense? Will that help you? Andrew, that's not going to help you? I probably will. Anybody see another way? I mean, you can come up with your own little way. No? So, in order to find the secant of 60, I'm going to first find the cosine of 60. Because that's its reciprocal function. Now, I shouldn't have to think too hard because I should have it memorized. The cosine of 60 is... One half, very good. So if the cosine of 60 is one half, then the secant of 60 is what? What's the reciprocal of one half? Two. Two over one, yes, but just two. So to find the cotangent of 150, what's my detour? What am I going to find first? Tangent of 150. Now this is a little bit trickier because 150 is not one of our memorized values. So we got to go through our two-step process. What quadrant are we in? Okay, so is tangent positive or negative? All students, correct, it's negative. What's our reference angle? 30. Memorized value, what's the tangent of 30? Root 3 over 3. So now when we reciprocate this, it's a negative number, so it's still going to be a negative number. And when you reciprocate root 3 over 3, you just flip that fraction. What's wrong with this? We have to rationalize. So what am I going to multiply by over itself? Root 3 over root 3. That's going to make your, ne your numerator negative 3 root 3. What's that going to do to your denominator? What's root 3 times root 3? Three? 3. Now what can you do? Simplify. The 3 over 3 cancels. So it's just negative root 3 is your answer. Now, just because I'm thinking of it, your calculator does not have a cotangent button, unfortunately. So in order to find the cotangent, you would literally have to type in 1 over the tangent of 150. And let me quickly make sure I'm in degrees. I am. 
So in order to type in cotangent on your calculator, you'd need 1 over the tangent of 150, which is that right there. And let's just confirm. Negative root 3 is that decimal. Okie doke. And cosecant of 3 pi over 4. What do I have to find first? Sine of 3 pi over 4. Couple things. Number one, it's in radians. Number two, it's not a memorized value. So, what quadrant are we in? Second, is sine positive or negative there? Positive. What's my reference angle? Pi over 4. What's the sine of pi over 4? Memorized value? Radical 2 over 2. So to reciprocate that, I get positive still, but 2 over root 2. Yes, I have to rationalize by multiplying by root 2 over root 2. I get 2 root 2 over 2, which just becomes root 2. Any questions? Exercise 2 has to be done on the calculator. So if I didn't just show you how to use the calculator, I was going to show you here anyway. Because we don't have 52 degrees as a memorized value, right? So in order to do this, we're going to do 1 over the cosine of 52. What mode should my calculator be in? Degrees. It was because I left it there. 1 over the cosine of 52, 1.6. Option 2. Okay. 3 is a great question. Now it gets us thinking a little bit deeper. Which of the following values of x is not in the domain? Now, obviously, we could guess and check and see which one. What would happen on the calculator if it's not going to be in the domain? What would happen? You're going to get an error. So obviously we could guess and check, and that's fine. We can do that. But let's talk about why this is. So the cosecant of x is the same thing as 1 over the sine of x, isn't it? Okay. We created a denominator by doing this, and our denominator cannot ever equal what? Zero. So essentially, what x value would make the sine of x zero? The sine of what equals zero? Memorize value, think of your chart. Zero. The sine of zero equals zero. Well, zero is not an option. But which one of these has a reference angle of zero? 180. The sine of 180 is also zero. That's not what gives us the undefined. What gives us the undefined is that we're doing 1 divided by the sine of 180, which is 1 divided by 0, which is a problem. And so you could show that on your calculator, 1 divided by the sine of 180 is the one that's going to give us error. Divide by 0. It's even specific. It kind of tells you that what's causing the error. Go to, and it just will kind of bring you back to the problem. All right. Determine the sign of each of the following trig functions in the quadrant specified. So this is like an all students take calculus exercise. But now they're not telling you, we're not dealing with sine, cosine, and tangent. We're dealing with these reciprocal functions. So they want to know, what will the sign be for the cotangent of beta if beta is in quadrant 2? Well, Cotangent is going to follow the same rules as its reciprocal function, which is what? What's the reciprocal function of cotangent? What? Tangent. Tangent is the reciprocal function for cotangent. So whatever tangent does, cotangent's going to follow, right? Whatever sine does, cosecant's going to follow. Whatever cosine does, secant's going to follow. Whatever tan does, cotangent's going to follow. So if they're asking for the sine of cotangent, you're pretty much going to be figuring out what's the sine of tangent in quadrant 2. Is the tangent in quadrant 2 positive or negative? Negative. So the cotangent is negative. 
there's not really much work to be shown. It's all it's all mental work, other than kind of showing that chart. Um, secant is going to follow what? Secant behavior is going to be the same as cosine behavior, right? So the cosine in quadrant four is what? Positive, so the secant will also be positive. And lastly, cosecant follows the rules of sine. So sine in quadrant three is what? Negative, so that's negative. Good, good. Okay, exercise five. Similarly, we're going to kind of use our reciprocal because they're not going to tell us about tangent being less than zero. They're going to tell you that cotangent is less than zero. It's up to you to realize then, okay, tangent must also be less than zero. So if tangent is negative, which quadrants can we limit ourselves to if tangent is negative? Two and four, correct. So this is out and that's out. And then to further narrow this down, the secant is positive, which means what else is positive? Cosine. So which quadrant are we in? Four. We can get rid of two. So which theta could be the one we're talking about? Which one of these is in quadrant four? Very good. I mean, look at that. There's really no work. It's all mental, which is kind of what makes this challenging. It's because you have to stop and think a lot. And it's not all, you know, machine work where you're just writing, 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 writing and crunching through steps. You have to mentally get through it. Exercise six. Okay. Multi-step problem. Great. A right triangle is shown. Side length A and B. Find the length of the hypotenuse in terms of A and B. Okay. So let's call it X for the moment. And we want to solve for X in terms of A and B. So what... What equation can you write that involves a, b, and x? a squared plus b squared equals x squared. And then we're going to solve for x by doing what to both sides? Square root, right? Do we need the plus or minus here? Mm, I don't think so. Don't I always say, like, the hypotenuse is always positive? Unless there's a little twist here. I don't... I haven't seen any reason to do anything other than positive because it is the hypotenuse. So I'm now going to label my hypotenuse a square root of a squared plus b squared. For the record, this is not a plus b. Yes? I know there are many, many of you based on your algebra skills that are tempted to simplify that to a plus b. That is not a thing. So do not simplify this. For the same reason, right, aren't radicals, just a side conversation because it's worth upping your algebra skills, aren't radicals the same thing as an exponent, right? Square root is the same as raising that polynomial to the one-half power. We don't distribute exponents to polynomials, do we? We have to expand, right? So if that was squared, a squared plus b squared, if that was squared, we would have to expand it and do all that foiling. We do not distribute exponents. No. Therefore, we do not, quote unquote, distribute radicals. All right, that was my side note. Um, when we get to b, we are stating the value of each of the following trig ratios in terms of a and b. So the sine of angle a, so we're talking about this angle. The sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So we're going to do a over the square root of a squared plus b squared. And for now, we're not going to rationalize because this is a little bit beyond the scope of what we should be able to rationalize. Then what's the cosecant? Cameron? you wanted me to write? Yeah. Where'd your... Oh, 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 oh. What's sim... Square root. 
Square root, good. Very good. The cosine of A is what, Connor? Good. The secant, Andy. Right, we're just flipping the cosine, nice. And the tangent, Maggie. And the cotangent, Maddie. Great. Okay, so these aren't that hard, right? It's just remembering which one goes with which. And the last one. If alpha is an angle whose this is just like what we've been doing, terminal ray lies in the fourth quadrant. Great, draw it. Drop your triangle. Great, got it. The cosine is 1 over 3. We're actually pretty lucky that they gave us the cosine because they could also tell you that the secant is 3. And that would have actually made this a little bit more challenging. Because if they told you the secant was 3, then you would have had to realize, okay, then the cosine is 1 third, and then you could label your adjacent 1 over your hypotenuse 3. And now they do want the value of cosecant, which is essentially the sine flipped. So we will find the sine. What do we have to do first, though? Pythagorean theorem, 1 squared plus x squared equals 3 squared. Subtract 1 from both sides. You'll get x squared equals 9 minus 1 is 8. Square root both sides. You get x equals, is it plus or minus? Negative root 8, right? What can we do, though, because root 8? 8 is the same thing as 4 times 2, right? Don't we know the square root of 4? So we can simplify that. The square root of 4 is 2 with a root 2 still left over. Simplifying radicals coming back in. So negative 2 root 2 is that side length. So now the sine is opposite over hypotenuse, which means the cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite, right? The hypotenuse is 3 over the opposite is negative 2 root 2. Can we leave it like that? No. What do we have to multiply by to rationalize this? Root 2 over root 2. So we get 3 root 2 over what? negative 4, right? Because the root 2 times root 2 is 2, times the 2 that's already there is a negative 4. Now, it is not common to see the negative left in the denominator. If it was an open response, this is more than fine. But if it's a multiple choice, you'll either see the negative just out in front, or you'll see the negative with the numerator. But they're all the same thing. Okay? Any questions on any of this? All right, so I have a homework sheet for you. There is a spiral, and that's your homework for the weekend.